What's going on, everybody? We're back for another episode of All Facts No Cap with my girl JK. JK, it's been about a couple of weeks since we ain't done this, so it's good to be back on it. It's good to be back. I've missed you. <laughs> I've been traveling. You've had things going on, yeah. but we're back. You can't get rid of me that quick. You <laughs> likewise, love. likewise. You All cannot right. escape my love. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're going to go ahead and hop into it right now. This is something that me, I know several people that have always kind of wondered this. Mm-hmm. And because obviously you're, you're a lady and I know you can give great insight into this. So I'm just going to go ahead and hop right in. Okay. And what's up with people? A lot of the times it can be a female uh-huh. posting a part of their significant other in their stories, but not the, the face, not giving you a direct a uh, replica or should I say implication of who it is they're with, but just kind of like a hand, maybe like a watch, maybe like the back of their head, but never really showing their face. I'm going to go ahead and just open up to you and you can go ahead and take it away. So the question is, why would someone do that? Right? Yes. Instead of just giving us the full frontal. <laughs> um, I don't understand. Social media is a platform to share your life. Right. And I think especially mm-hmm. when you start seeing someone, um, may, perhaps you guys haven't defined the relationship all the way. It's still new. You're not ready to hundred percent take it public yet because maybe you haven't been seeing each other that long, but it's consistent. It's moving in the right direction. So therefore they've become part of your life. And if you're out with them enough, you know, then you're like, okay, well, if I'm out to dinner and there's a fancy presentation, I get your arm, you're sitting across from me in the, in the photo or um, I think it's a way to, I don't know, just, just show people that like, you know, I got something like going on, but we're not there yet. I'm not ready to make the full public announcement yet because maybe we haven't solidified or made it concrete with each other, which I totally get. Um, but I think there's also two reasons that people can do this. I think there's like the immature reason, uh-huh. like the normal, the normal. Now we're getting reason. somewhere. Okay. Normal okay. Reason, right. So the immature one is obviously you might do that because you want someone else to see mm-hmm. okay. whether it's an ex, whether it's, I don't know, some, some sort of girl drama, something, something. Yeah. Um, yeah. want someone to see it, to tell somebody that sucks. I want <laughs> I want people to grow and get past that because the time and energy that it takes to, you know, make plans, get ready, invest in an evening or a situation to go do that just so someone else may or may not see it. Y'all, we have to get past this. But I think it's totally normal if, sure, we can call it breadcrumbing, right? We give you little dinks and dunks here and there. Um snapshots of of someone and just because it's not that serious yet i think that's okay um because then and here's my final thought then let's say it does fall apart before it gets to the okay we're serious boyfriend and girlfriend and we're going to talk a little bit later about you know how do we make that decision mm-hmm. we know that it's going there or it is there um now i don't have to like like explain so much. If I do the hard post with them, now everyone's going to be like, Oh my God, you deleted the hard post. Now what? Now I got to tell you the whole story. Okay. okay. Of why we broke up. If, if I don't do the whole full frontal post, then I had like less energy for me to tell the story. Or when I do post, you know, the, the picture of them, the, the hard post picture of us, then I have to also have to tell less of a story because I was like, oh, my God, where did he come from? Da, 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 da. Now, you know, I've been trickling you along the whole way. And you're like, oh, yeah. OK, I, I get it. It's seeing somebody. So it's it's less work either way. And I, and I see it. I, I get it from the standpoint of, you know, we're seeing each other. It's going good, but I'm not ready to introduce it to the public yet. OK. All right. I got a few. Uh, I got a few thoughts. I got a few responses to that. And. I remember an ex a long time ago always basically told me this and she, she gave several reasons as to why she felt it was this way. And like I said, I'm not a woman you are. So I'm going to let you go ahead and address what I'm about to say. Okay. And because of how, and we're going to get into this topic a little bit later, how for women, 
obviously they have a certain checklist of what they want in a man and whatever their checklist is, that's their business. Vice and versa. so go ahead. And vice versa. Yeah. So, so the thing is that what was always relayed to me was that on some level, whether it was not being sure, like what you just said about whether the, the level of commitment is going to be something that is reciprocated, whether it's going to be full fidelity, things like that. But whenever a woman just posts like the arm or just, you know, the back of his head, just, you know, his, his hand, something like that, on some level, she's not all the way satisfied with him. Or should I say, maybe she may not feel like He's on the level that she needs him to be on, whether it is for something that is simply superficial, whether it is something that is that he's not giving to her. He's not giving her that level of commitment, that level of communication, being simpatico on the same train of thought or something like that. And so because he's not where she needs him to be or wants him to be, whether it be superficial or whether it be something profound, that's why it's more of a, I'm not going to show everybody because I'm afraid of what some people might think. But to your point, I'm still going to give you the breadcrumbs. I still want to show that, hey, I'm not out here all alone. I got somebody. Somebody wants me, but not all the way completely satisfied with it. Well, I hate that for that girl. I think my first question would be like, why are you investing time with someone who, you know, isn't isn't meeting your needs, isn't meeting your standards, isn't who you want to be going because, out with? And no, I don't want number one. What? Why would you do that? Because, and, and I'll answer that. I don't want to cut you off, but I'll answer that. Oh, yeah. Because, and like I said, I've got several homegirls that I've had this conversation with. Mm -hmm. And they want a man on a certain level. Whatever level that is, that's their business. But they want a man on a certain level. And they currently have not met a man, have not found a man who's on the level that they want their man to be on. So but they want to make it seem like I'm, I'm still out there. I'm, I'm dating. I'm exactly. Okay. So, and I say that because too many times you'll, you'll, you'll turn, you'll, you'll just open up Instagram, social media, and you'll see if the female, let's say is dating insert high value man here, shout out to uh, Kevin Samuels insert high value man here. Well, she has no problem letting, everybody know who she's with because right. she's proud of him. Obviously she wants to show him off to the world, things like that. But if she's not all the way satisfied, like I said, whether it's superficial, whether it's profound, that's when all of a sudden it's, well, I like to keep my personal life private. So that's what, uh, that's what I've always been told. You give me your thoughts. Well, personally, I mean, I would never, do that. And I think that goes back to my, you know, first point of the, right. The immature reasoning mm -hmm. where you, you just, that's an insecurity. That's something that you're, you are too concerned with appearances and what other people think of you yeah. instead of making yourself happy. She's worried about other people thinking that she needs to look this way, that she's desired by men, right? Maybe she wants men to see, well, like somebody's taking me out, right. Instead of actually building herself up to be that high value woman that attracts that high value man that she wants. So that's like a big, like personal growth, like mindset shift that I think she needs to, to do, because that's, that's not going to get you anywhere. You're, we're making up stories about what people may or may not be thinking about us, mm. which, is, which, <laughs> is Very such, true. which is such a waste of time. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Right. You don't know what anybody's thinking or not thinking. Um, and most of the time when we assume what we think they are thinking, you're dead wrong. And everyone yep. is too concerned. Everyone is too concerned with themselves. I'm not saying people don't love the tea and they don't love the gossip and the this, the that, but they are not as concerned with what you got going on in your Instagram story that's up for 24 hours. <laughs> <laughs> you may or may not see some guy's hand or arm that just could be somebody you're standing by in the crowd. You know, people. I don't know. <laughs> hey, you're right on that. You're spot on. And you always you always bring it back to growth, which is something I always admire about you, because that really is what it should be about. The growth, maturity. Are you evolving? And yeah, I think that uh, once you get to a certain point, once you get to a certain age, 
those those mundane things, they just shouldn't matter as much as they once did. If they ever mattered at all, depending on who you are. So I definitely got to uh, go with you on that one. Yeah. And I think, you know, we were all young and we all posted for appearances at at some point in our lives. Right. Especially as you know, Stan, yeah. you and you and I were <clears throat> I don't know. I think you got a couple years on me, but just. <laughs> Fresh, fresh out. Of, no, no, I don't mean that. I don't mean that in a bad way. I don't mean that in a bad way. I mean, but just kind of like fresh out of college when Instagram came yep. and how Instagram yep. transformed over the last, uh, I don't know, 10, 12 years. Yeah, about a decade. It yeah. has been. I mean, right? We didn't even have stories when Instagram first came out. So um, it's it's changed a lot. And I think throughout that time too, you know, our posting has and our mindset around posting has as well. So yeah, there's growth there because we've seen a lot a lot more time on Instagram than the kids today have. So, but oh, yeah. they'll get there. And, and and we weren't meant to, you know, have this mindset around it that we do now uh, back then. And that's why we do now. So. <clears throat> All right. Okay. We got through the first topic. We got <laughs> through the first one without, uh without verbally sparring, but I feel like we're going to probably <laughs> go at it on this one right here. So the next one, and I'm just going to open it up to you once again. Okay. Does dating history matter? So we're so we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna talk about this relative to, to two different yep. topics, two two yep. different schools of thought here, okay? And the first one is um your number, your body count, how many people you've slept with <laughs> to, take, to take all the filters off, okay? That's number one. Uh, and number two is actual relationship history, and. Uh, and this is where we're gonna disagree. Number one, I do not think the first one matters at all. And I'm going to give you, okay. four, I'm going to give you four reasons why the second one I think is imperative. If you're looking to have a serious relationship, perhaps a commitment with someone. I love how all of these things are, our topics are like really flowing tonight. Mm -hmm. I'm just right ahead of myself there, but, um, all right. So that, but back to body count, right? Everyone's like, what's your number? What's your number? There's even a movie Stan called what's your number. Okay. We're a girl. It is? Yes. Where, um, oh, what's her name? Um, the blonde who Ooh. was in uh, the house bunny. Um, whatever. Wow, I'm going to have to check that out. But, but the, <laughs> it's cute. I think Chris Evans is the, is the lead male in it. Um, Anna mm. Ferris. Okay. Um, I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. And her whole objective throughout the whole movie is to, she doesn't want to exceed sleeping with 21 guys because an article came out in a magazine that says that you're X amount of times less likely to get married if you sleep with over 21 guys. So she goes back through her whole litany of ex-boyfriends trying to say, okay, well, I can't, I can't be with another new guy. I got to find an ex-boyfriend. Yeah. So she I just circles the box. Yeah. And so it's her trying to find the ex-boyfriend to have sex with them and then, you know, eventually marry them. Okay. <laughs> take your time. Take narrative. your time. Back to our original narrative of should you know someone you're dating's body count? First things first, no number is the right number. Okay. It doesn't matter, Stan, if I tell you that I've, you know, my number is five, my number is 50, my number is 10, it's two. This is not Major League Baseball. There is no magic number. Okay. This is not late September in the MLB. <laughs> there is no magic number to win the division. All right. <laughs> That's it. Because everyone is going to have yeah. a different philosophy on that. Okay. Hey, true, true. Okay. So you really shooting in the dark there. If you think that, oh yeah, well, uh, it's 17, but I'm going to tell everybody seven. Someone still might think that's too high. Yeah. Okay. Facts. That, that's also really unfair. Okay. So number one, no number is the right number. It doesn't matter what you say, whether it's one or 100. Second, let's make this a little academic. Let's do the math. I'm about to be 36. I'm about to be 36 this year. All right. How how old were you when you lost your virginity? Okay. So let's let's just make for just conversation's sake, let's say I lost my virginity 20 years ago. Okay. Okay. Now, if I tell you that I've slept with 20 people on first blush, Stan, you're gonna be like, oh, oh my God, that's a lot of people, especially if you're thinking about dating me seriously. But if you break that down from when I started yeah. having sex, that averages out to what does it average to? One per year. year. That number is not so unfriendly now, is it? Yeah, I mean, I'm oh, right there with you. So, so, okay, so yeah, so 
what's I think people forget to do that too, right? It's like, okay, no, I didn't just lose my virginity like last fall. Then that might be a little questionable, but whatever. All right. Number three, no one is keeping a little black book of all of the skeletons in their closet. And if you are, you shouldn't want to sleep with them anyway. That's so freaking weird. <laughs> okay. It's so weird if you are keeping a tally or a roster of all of the names <laughs> of the people that you have taken down. All right. Or or you have some, ser <laughs> some serious self-esteem ego issues that I don't want to know about. Okay. So no one's keeping a tally. Therefore, back to our first point, you're never going to know the right number. Okay, no number is the mm -hmm. right number. And if you're giving a number, it's probably going to be wrong because you're probably forgetting about some people. All right. So, and then lastly, how do you know, how do you know that what I'm telling you is the truth? How can you believe me? How do you know that I'm not shaving five people off? <laughs> <laughs> or, or maybe, maybe I was in uh, a relationship for 10 years yeah. and my number is only three. Now you're like, oh, wait, she hasn't been with that many people. She might not be that good in med. Right? So everyone is going to have a different school of thought here. And also, like, you, do, that person is probably going to make the number a lot less if it's high because they don't want to seem however that may come off. So yeah. those are my points. Therefore, it invalidates any number <laughs> anyone gives you. I don't think it's important. I'm not worried about that. What I'm worried about is how... You treat me from the moment we met going forward. That's all that matters. Okay. All right. Um, first off, you gave four reasons as to why it doesn't matter. Now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to point out a, a contradiction within uh, okay. your first point. Right. And correct me if I'm wrong, but just, you know, a couple weeks ago, doo -doo 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 -doo, you were saying how a man who goes and likes a lot of pictures of certain women Following mm -hmm. certain women on Instagram, that's a red flag, right? Right? I to to an extent, yeah. So I, I if, think there's a, a a line that it's a little so if him liking a lot of pictures, following a lot of girls that are dressed a certain way, that's gonna mm -hmm. gain an excess amount of attention. If that's a red flag, well then somebody's dating history could also be called into the same question. Now Here's where I'll go with this. I think that it's very nuanced. And the reason why I feel like it does matter to a certain degree is because your dating history, who you chose, who you chosen to date, that also reveals your character. That reveals your morals. That reveals your likes, your dislikes. That just reveals a lot of your personality because obviously that's what you're attracted to. So I think that for dating history, it does come to a certain degree. It does matter because that gives a glimpse into your vernacular. That gives a glimpse into what you're attracted to, whether it's consciously, subconsciously, whatever you want to call it. That's why to me, I feel like it does come into, it does come into a consideration to a certain degree, not from, like you said, the immature, not from, oh my God, what's your body count? Not from that. But I think it also, it calls into play exactly what you are most attracted to, what your values are, what your morals are. Because I can tell you one thing that I love or one thing that I value very highly. And then you go and you look at my past five girlfriends and you see that that's completely false based on who they were. So that's why to me, I feel like um, dating history, it has a, it has a certain credence to it. Oh, for sure. And I think that's more so like relationship history, right? I thought we were just talking about like strict, like what's your number here? Like, <laughs> okay. I'll give, now I'll give you, I'll give you the relationship, you know, history thoughts. And I completely agree with you there a hundred percent. Um, but let me ask you, uh, are you someone who asks people who are, you know, uh, potential dating girlfriend candidates uh you know how many people they've slept with do you, <laughs> do you think that do you think that that is is relevant uh to how you think of them or something that you know a number that you're looking for do you ask that question okay you put me on the spot right now i do believe the that... girls in the audience that know that you've asked that are like yes he does <laughs> <laughs> now listen 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 right 
I say that because that's something that will just simply come within the flow of a conversation. Doesn't mean it's going to happen tonight. Doesn't mean it's going to happen tomorrow. It could happen mm-hmm. two years from now, but just sure. a simple flow of a conversation. And it's more of, and honestly, I'll be honest with you. When a lot of guys ask that, it's more of, are you willing to answer it rather than even what the answer is? Because listen, once you reach the age of what, 25, like ain't nobody, no virgin no more. So mm-hmm. Everybody has a past. Everybody does. That's just the ugly truth about it. So I think for a lot of guys, they just want to see, are you going to answer it? Are you going to go and all of a sudden start getting a little cagey where you're getting tight lip, things like that, where you want to change the subject? Because now it seems like you got something to hide, much like if a woman is to ask a man, uh, hey, are you married? Or, hey, are you in a relationship? And he starts kind of hemming and hawing. It shows that he has something to hide. So I think for a lot of guys... Uh, that probably is the main reason why they're asking. But also at the end of the day, you know, like whenever it's locker room talk or whenever you're with your homeboys, things like that. The last thing that anybody wants on this planet, and I feel pretty confident in saying this, is you want your significant other to be respected by everybody around Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I think for a lot of people, they want to make sure that they can ensure that that level of respect is going to be had, even though it could she could be a Virgin Mary and some people may not think highly of her. She could mm-hmm. be the opposite of a Virgin Mary and people may not think highly of her. So I think it uh it's very nuanced. But to your question. Yeah, that's why uh that's why a lot of guys. That's why a lot of guys. That's just for. And then also. For testosterone driven, animalistic, partly immature type of mindset mentality, just that macho uh, type of uh, type of thing. Okay, okay. Um, I'm gonna let you slide there because you didn't really <laughs> answer my question. Okay, hold on. <laughs> yes, yes, I've asked that question before. Yes, okay. I have. Okay. Yes, okay. I have. Okay. And then, how did you feel when you got the answer? <laughs> <laughs> Oh man. Um, and, and, and I'm not saying you have to like give like a specific, you know, instance, but just generally, right. Cause there's, I, I know we have a lot of female listeners too. So, and I know that they want insight to, <laughs> male you, mind. Know, you, to be- you know, being an athlete your whole life <laughs> in, in the NFL <laughs> now incredibly successful, right. It's, it's an interesting place to tap into. So. All right. Uh, whenever you get the answer and listen, right. It, it also depends on your level of security. It also depends on your level of confidence. Some guys are incredibly insecure whenever they hear the number and they fly off the handle. Some guys are able to go ahead and take it all in stride. And I can tell you, honestly, it's more of a relief and it's because I'm now dealing with yeah, somebody she was telling you the truth. Say that again. If she was telling you the truth, which hold on, hold, and hold on, I'm I'm gonna then get to that okay. a- after after I answer this. So it is because the maturity aspect, and to me, if we're dating, obviously if we're going somewhere, we're trying to take this thing somewhere. Everything should be on the table, because there's anything you can ask me, I'm gonna gladly tell you. Mm-hmm. So. It should be vice versa. And so that level of maturity, that level of vulnerability, that level of being open and transparent, that to me is why you get that feeling of relief because, okay, like, okay, we're on the same page. Like I can ask her something. She answers it. I may not like the answer, may not love the answer, but she's at least giving it to me. Just like if she asked me something, I'm going to be able to give it to her. And now you're going to be running the math equation like I just told you, and it's going to be a lot better. Now, listen, now, oh, now like, hold okay, on. Okay, and how old were you when you lost your virginity? Okay, 18. So 28 minus listen, 18, 10 years, now, carry the one. <laughs> now, listen, you may do that like in high school. You may do that in college, you know, do the math, carry the one, things like that. But once you get like past that, it's not something that's heavenly something that uh that has so much profound weight as it once did because you know when you're young you don't want to be teased by your homeboys your your college teammates or you know what have you so you put more emphasis into that you know mm-hmm. and so I'll just I and, and 
you asked me something before, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to touch on it. Okay. So, long, 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 long time ago. Long time ago. So, what I was always taught, you know, by a lot of homeboys, OGs, is that the thing is, like you just said, who knows? They could be lying to you. The man could be lying to you. The woman could be lying to you. So that's where sometimes you got to kind of use context clues or sometimes you got to maybe ask them the same question just in a different form at a later date. See if mm -hmm. the number changes, see if anything changes from the way that they recollect uh, their past, from the way that they depict something, things like that. And then also. Listen. Just like in the business world, just like in corporate world, mm -hmm. when you apply for a job. What do they like you to add on your resume? References. So, okay. <laughs> so that also comes into play. So as a man, if you meet somebody and let's say they live in Tacoma, Washington, whatever. Mm -hmm. If you know some, some people up there, you may go ahead, give them a call. Hey, what you know about uh, so-and-so? You know her? Uh, what you know? Blah, blah, blah. This, that, mm -hmm. and the other. And vice versa. So, that also helps your ability to be able to ascertain whether it's accurate or inaccurate. Sure, sure. That's <laughs> I feel like you have some. I feel like you have some to rebuttal with. No, 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 no. Um, I I love the reference comment. That's totally valid, and I think both men and women do it. I think it's smart to do it. Um, no, oh, I, I know I, women do it. I like. I, I got <laughs> homegirls, and like they've hit me up. Hey, Stan. Just met this guy at the bar last night. What you know about him? And hey, bro, don't lie to me. Right, right. <laughs> yeah, you want to you want to know what you're getting into, right? Because everyone's on their best behavior in the beginning. Um, this is the last thing I'll say about the 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 body count number is that it's so interesting <laughs> that that number for men is like a badge of honor, and for women it's like a badge of dishonor. You want your number to be as high as it can be, and it, <laughs> it, it, relative to society, right? women are should be like as low as possible. Well, you know, those things don't really add up, right? You're right. You're right. <laughs> because you do it together. So, yeah. <laughs> True. I, again, I don't know. I don't know what kind of math we're doing here, but um, it's so interesting how that's, how that's viewed in society. And what made me think of that was you, you said, you know, locker room talk and then you said resumes. I'm like, Oh, pad the resume, you know, like pad the numbers. Um, but it's so interesting how that's viewed that yours is, you know, you get a gold star if it's higher than everybody else's. And if ours is higher than anybody else's, it's like, OK, you need to go sit in the corner and think about what you've done. You know, I'm going to make a comment. You tell me where this lands with you. All right. <clears throat> and I've had a couple of these conversations with a few of my homegirls and you know, for what you just said, how for men, it's like a badge of honor for females. It's like a badge of shame, things like that. Well, for men, and this does not go for everybody. This is just a pretty large number. That's a lot of how women rate you. And this is what I mean. I want everybody to just make sure that you follow me carefully. <laughs> And I have homegirls who have told me this. That's why I'm saying this. I have homegirls that have told me this. Mm -hmm. And they basically, have, listen, Stan, I don't really, I'm not attracted to a guy that no other woman isn't attracted to. Like, why would I want somebody that's not a hot commodity? Why would I want somebody who's not wanted? And so for men, that makes them look better because it shows just like this. Why is it that Ferrari is highly coveted? Why is a Rolls Royce highly coveted? Because that's just kind of like the top of the line. Why are Nick's courtside tickets highly coveted? Because that's something that everybody wants. So when it's something that everybody wants, or at least appears to have a high demand, well, then it must be something that is really of high, of high value, high substance, because... That's what apparently what everybody's looking at. That's what's highly coveted. So from that aspect, that's why for men, it's more of a badge of honor, or at least that's why it's viewed that way by a lot of people within society. And then 
Also, lastly, okay, JK, you live in New York City. Yeah. Largest city in the country. Yeah. Correct? I, I think so, yeah. <laughs> you can walk into a bar, and I'm pretty sure you will have tons of suitors, correct or incorrect? Um, well, when you say suitor, I suppose you mean, I mean, you, I mean, you, you, you can have, you, you will have tons of inbound requests to field. Yes. You have tons of inbound requests. Is is that, is that fair? I sure you're, 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 you're not wrong, but it's, um, that's something I like think of. Uh, yes, sure. And so, and so for men, it's obviously not that easy for men to just get a influx, an influx of inbound requests repeatedly, you know, not unless in like a movie star, you know, Cristiano Ronaldo or whoever. Right. So that's why for men, it's also viewed as a badge of honor because it's something that is not easy to get something to, you know, put a little work in, got to have a little bit of swag, have a little bit of suave, you know, a little bit of intellect, things like that. So right. that's where it's viewed as more of a badge of honor because it's something you have to obtain, something you have to earn, something you have to, you have to achieve versus, versus the fair sex who simply is going to have, like you just said, a lot of inbound requests. Well, and both of the analogies that you just made, I absolutely love, and they work on the other side of the coin too. So you specifically, you talked about Nick's courtside seats, right? Well, they're mm -hmm. so, they're so desired. They're highly touted by yeah. everyone. Everyone wants them. Right. But guess what? only a few people can sit there. And mm -hmm. that's why it's so impressive when women's numbers are so low. So it's yeah. like, get you, you know, the men get the success, <laughs> you know, when they've won a lot of women over. And then the women, especially the ones who, like we said, get all the inbound requests, right? When you have, when you are that discerning, Right. And know how to I say like that word and know, and know how to say no. Right. That's what makes you desirable. So it's a really it's a really interesting dynamic there. Oh, no, it really, really is. It just because, like I said, it's such a it's such a delicate dichotomy in how men and women are both viewed. And I think also at this point right here, I'll ask you this and. I feel confident in asking you this question because like I said, I've had this combo uh, several times with uh, several female friends of mine. And let's say there was a guy, okay? He was, let's say he's celibate, has never, never, he, he, let's say he's a virgin, mm -hmm. okay? Would you want to date him? And well, I can tell, I can tell by that side that you just gave, I feel like I'm, but don't worry, go ahead. Okay. Well, so I have some questions. <laughs> <laughs> I have some questions about him, right? I want to know like why he's a virgin. Um, what made him make that choice? Uh, is that some, is he saving himself for marriage? Yes. I don't know. Do, do I, okay. Do I want to buy the car without taking it for a test drive? I love that analogy you just gave. I love that analogy, but keep we going. We were talking about Ferraris and Rolls Royces. It was just, you know, top of mind, I guess. Um, I don't, I don't know. I, and I'm not saying that it's, it's a bad thing or, or it would be bad, but I think that if you are someone who is used to being in a relationship where, right, you have sex and then you don't have that as, as an outlet of connection, not saying that that's the, the only way to connect, but that's still a, a dynamic and, and a facet of the relationship, then that might be like a disalignment of you and someone else, especially if, if I haven't made that choice for myself, is that something that he's even going to be attracted to? I don't know. Or is he like, well, okay, you know, nobody else is really like this. So that's okay. Well, so what I was about to say is there's a lot of nuance there. Um, but it's similar to like, do you want to date someone? If you drink, do you want to date someone who doesn't drink? Well, yeah, mm -hmm. you? absolutely. Yes, you can. But that is a lifestyle choice that is going to like perhaps create unnecessary conflict. I, I don't know. 
Um, it depends. It, it seems like someone almost has to like bend a little bit. Um, I'm probably going to start drinking less, or maybe you might, you know, have a drink here or there because I think it can, I'm not saying it can't work, but it can create a lot of conflict. So, but I think I strayed from your original question of would I want to <laughs> date, date someone who Come on now, yes or no, yes or no, would, would not, who would not have sex with me. Um, yes or no. Come on now. I'm putting you on the spot. Uh oh. I, I think uh -oh. that I think I think that would be really difficult. I think that would be really difficult. Okay. I guess my parents know I'm not a virgin now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, so they're, they're not so, listening to this. I hope. <laughs> all right. We are gonna go ahead. We are gonna flow on no. to the next. Wait, wait. I did. I did have a point I wanted to make though. Um, relative to the relationship side of things, before mm -hmm. we before we switch gears um, and about how important I do think that is. And I don't really care. I feel like I'm about to like quote a Backstreet Boys song right now. I don't really care like who you are. <laughs> I don't care who they were, <laughs> who the girls were. Like, I don't need to see their Instagrams. I don't need to, you know, know details about them. But I do want to know about the dynamic of your relationship. How many serious relationships have yeah. you had? When was the last one? How long were you together? Um, why did you ultimately break up? You know, what were things that you couldn't work through? Agreed. And, and then like, what have you learned from that? Agreed. Right. How, how could you have shown up differently? How could, what were things that you wish that she was or was not that was different? So I think to, to the first point that you made, um, about how telling that is about who, who someone is, how they, Again, it's back to the to the personal growth. What kind of relationship experience do you have? Of and, course, thousand and, percent. And just as you asked me, you know, would you date someone who has never had sex before? I don't think that I would consider dating seriously someone who has never been in a serious, committed relationship before. And that's not to say that they are, you know, an extreme playboy. If they are, okay, well, I'm probably not going to be attracted to you anyway, because um, I don't like I don't vibe with that energy anymore. But um, I need to get my nails done. Um, but, you know, that what that means, Stan, is I'm going to have to teach you. So I can't be the relationship that you cut your teeth on. I'm going to have to teach you so much. I don't, I don't have the time. That you don't want to be my, the guinea pig. That is not my job. Right. That should have happened when you were in your mid 20s. Um, and I but I also probably like am not going to like energetically vibrationally attract someone like that but that would be a huge red flag for me if you haven't had a serious relationship um or on the other side if you've only been in relationships if you've had seven serious girlfriends and each relationship was two years and each, he hasn't had a hot boy face uh that but also i know that you can't be a single man by yourself you always need somebody there yeah. So yeah, I know a couple guys face. like that. Yeah, it's a hot boy face, but why can't, why aren't you okay being alone? Mm -hmm. so okay. That, that's a little it. codependent red flag too. Um, you probably don't even know who you are because you're just kind of living on sort of this validation or this support from this person always being with you. So that's also a red flag for me as well. All right. Last question before we go ahead and move on to the next topic. Mm -hmm. I remember it just like we talked about a couple of days ago, there was a post on Instagram. I believe it was spiritual word where you're mm -hmm. seeing the conversation and I forget who it was. that was talking and she was talking about there was a guy that she was seeing and she asked him what his body count was. And he said, he said a thousand women. Oh yeah. So yeah. here we go. Would you date a man who's been with, I'm not going to say a thousand, but let's just say a lot a plethora of women. So two things. Number one, I would never, I would never ask that question. But number two, I think the people who probably have as a generalization, okay, uh, the highest body counts are the people that you named earlier. They're an actor, they're an athlete, they are in the the public eye of some sort, right? Because they are in more positions to or situations to go home with more women, right? Yeah. You're at, you, if, especially if you are an 
I am preaching to the choir here. You probably know what I'm about to say, right? You've always, you're extremely talented. You've always been a star athlete from a young age, right? You've always been looked at by your peers in school as somebody who has something special, which sets you apart, which automatically makes you desirable. Forget what you look like, right? And yeah. that, that gives you that confidence, that swag. And of course, you're extremely handsome. So all of those things together, you've always had in a, you, anybody, right, who, who is talented um, and good at what they do automatically get the more inbound requests and, <laughs> and they have had that their whole life. So, yeah. so it's a long winded way to answer your question of, would I be interested in perhaps dating someone who was a professional athlete or a former very famous professional athlete or an actor or no, I wouldn't. I wouldn't because you are still going to, they are still going to be finding themselves in situations where it's very easy for them to go home with women that are throwing themselves at them yeah. at the drop of a hat. And they have never had to use that. Like we just said before that discernment, they've never had to say no, because why the hell would they? Right. Mm -hmm. um, but it's almost like a little reward too, right? I'm good. I'm going home with the girl. Life, <laughs> life is good. And, and I, there's no hate there. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, but as, as someone who does want a, a loyal, committed, equal relationship, I think it, it would be very difficult for me to be with someone who, has that kind of celebrity if I also didn't have that too. Um, and that's, you know, I'm not because simply because I'm not going to have the same kind of schedule that you yeah. do. Right. Mm -hmm. And so that's hard. That instantly is like makes, you know, gives you that conflict there. But then also we see celebrities get together and break up all the time because they do oh, yeah. have such busy schedules. So it's like, it's damned if you do, and you're damned if you don't. So I think, I think it's, it's <laughs> probably very difficult um to be a celebrity and and have a serious committed meaningful relationship one way or the other yeah definitely uh can't disagree can't argue with that so don't, uh, don't, so, sign, don't sign me up i'm good <laughs> so hey y'all hear that do not sign jk up she does not want the the high value man package uh no 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 I'm just, oh, okay it, hold on you can you could play sports, but just be done after college. Like you actually, <laughs> you need to have played a college sport. Actually, that's like on the checklist. Okay. Yep. Well, we'll, we'll address. I was, a, I was a college athlete. But that don't mean he got to be one. It does if you're trying Come to. Come on, you're, be, you're, you're, you're being judgmental. No. You're discriminating. I'm not discriminating. So if he didn't play a college sport. I'm probably not going to be as attracted to you because you are, you are, you probably didn't take athletics that seriously. And I did. I went to school for dance. I danced professionally after college. Okay. I get that. But like, that just seems like such a stark line to draw in the sand of he, 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 he must have played college sports. He didn't what have just high to, school. What if he it was just high school? To, but if you were to go back and look back at my dating history, I mean, most of them have. And listen, listen, Stan, I'm attracted to tall, athletic looking guys. And just <laughs> it is what it is. Y'all hear that? Maybe, maybe it's who tall I and like. athletic. Maybe it's just a byproduct of the qualities I like in a person. <laughs> That's what it is. And we know that, you know, he can't be an LSU fan or no. Auburn. I I told you I've done did that and that's <laughs> All I'm, right. I'm, I'm not fighting that fight for the rest of my life. So <laughs> I choose Stan. I choose peace. <laughs> I choose. I get peace. it. I get I it. Peace and calm. Yeah. Even though I think uh, the Let's Crimson be Tide the same, be on the same team. I get it. I respect that. Even though the Crimson Tide aren't going to do anything in the NCAA tournament this spring, but uh, we're going to go ahead and move on to the next topic. I'm, I'm sure we'll lose in the first round at 2.30 p.m. Eastern time on Thursday in Birmingham. <laughs> okay, all right. When do you know 
that you're it's the just right mad that you're number four and we're overall number one in the last AP poll. I actually wanted to start tonight off that way, but you just jumped into it too quickly. But I'm so glad we got to circle back there and that, you know, you guys lost by what was it, nine points that, that, and we won by 19. Oh, God, you you love to see it, but you hate to see it. OK. All right. What were you saying? What? I'm not going to take the bait on that. I'm just going to go ahead and move on to the next topic. How do you know it is the right time to get serious with somebody that you've been dating? Yeah. You know what? I've been, <laughs> I've been answering first our two questions, right? So mm-hmm. uh, now we're in triple overtime and it's your, <laughs> turn. it's your turn to have the ball first. So All right. now, because I, for the most part, the relationships are led by the men relative to the direction and the speed with which you are traveling in that direction. So I would love to hear your thoughts and then I'll counter them. Oh man. Um, that's multi-layered. So I'll go ahead and try to, I'll try to arrive at the point expeditiously. (laughs) I think that, uh, for me, it's more about, I got to see where your head is. I got to see that level of maturity. I got to see that level of direction. I got to see the discernment, like what we just talked about. And I need to know if we're aligned. I need to know if we have the same type of values. And now once I see that, that's when me as a man, I naturally, my feelings start growing. Once mm-hmm. I see that we're aligned, because you already know that I can walk into a bar, you can walk into to a, a club, a, a coffee shop, whatever, and you can instantly be attracted to somebody. But that doesn't mean that you're going to have that mental connection. It doesn't mean that you're going to be mentally aligned with them. So for me, it's more about that than it is the looks because that's what's going to see you through all the way to the end is, is having that mental connection and being aligned with them versus just that physical attraction or the jungle fever because eventually that's going to wear off. 100%. So my follow-up question for you is, you said you want to know that you're aligned with someone. You want to see their yeah. maturity. So my next question is two parts. Number one, um, and again, this is just at, you know, generally as a rule, it doesn't need to be down to the day, but about how long does that take for you to recognize that in someone? Um, and then number two is w- w- mature relative to what aligned relative to what is like, what are the things that you're looking for that are going to give you that feeling that's going to make you check that box or at least color it in to say, all right, we're, we're moving in the right direction here. And, you know, let's continue to see where this goes. Okay. First part, uh, first answer probably take maybe about, I'd say anywhere between four to six weeks, as far as like me to actually know where this could possibly go versus knowing that this really can't go anywhere based on something I may have already seen encountered or something like that. And I think that when you talk about the maturity, it's just through conversation and you know, you can talk to somebody just having a three hour conversation with them and you can learn a lot about how they handle conflict. You Mm -hmm. can learn a lot about something that may have triggered them within their upbringing, their past, things like that. And just having those conversations about, okay, so why did your last relationship not work out? And to me, if I can have a conversation with somebody and they're talking about their previous relationships and it's always they, 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 what they did, they did, they did, they did. I love as this in, point. I love in, the point. As in you didn't do not a damn thing wrong. To me, that already tells me right there, like, okay, that's not accepting accountability. Now, you can easily be with somebody and they can be completely toxic. There's no doubt about that where, yes, they're the culprit for the deterioration of the relationship. But to sit up and not have anything that you would have done different, anything at all to me that's a major red flag and so that's why i like to have conversations because man you can reveal so much having a conversation with somebody and even when somebody's trying to they're trying to elude they're trying to be evasive with a certain point with a certain characteristic with a certain trait about themselves just in conversation it's gonna come out because We all know you go on a first date. It's more of your representative that's showing up to the date. It's not the real (laughs) you, but you can't keep up that charade. You can't keep up that facade for, for a long period of time. 
You can't because the real you is going to come out one way or the other, whether it's after you've had a few drinks, whether it is in the first moment of conflict or argument or disagreement, whether you're going through a stressful time at your job and the way that you handle stress is a certain way that may not be conducive to having a healthy relationship, things like that. So that's where I'm looking at all of those factors as to are we mentally aligned? Do you have maturity? Do you have discernment? And also just do you have perspective? Because the biggest thing is you have to know where you come from. You got to know where you were if you want to have any direction on where you're going. And I think if you don't understand your past, you're doomed to repeat it. Mm. I love that. Great. And I think I think the the part about taking personal responsibility and, you know, to what we were just discussing about what does your relationship history look like? Um, being able to say, you know, I I chose somebody that was this way and we got in fight about this, this and this. And like I played into it this way. And you have to there is 100 percent responsibility on both sides. And I think to your point of, you know, saying that, like, well, you know, this is how they were. But this is this was my part in that dynamic, too, proves tremendous amount of self-awareness mm -hmm. uh, yep. that is imperative because I, I watched a meme the other day. I, I love to follow like relationship profiles and, you know, some of the stuff we send to each other. Oh yeah. Uh, and, and, they, and they said the most important uh, skill you can have as a couple is learning how to fight. Oh, of course. Learning how to fight. And I love, I actually love it when conflict comes up first <laughs> And in the beginning stages of not because I want to fight because like, I want to see like, okay, how is this going to go? So I, mm. I, I love that you said that and I could not agree more. Uh, good to know. So, wow. We agree on this. Uh, definitely. Uh, did not think that we'd be agreeing is, is, uh, acutely, but Hey, surprises. Yeah. No, I, I think and I was also um, curious, like relative to like your time frame, too, because I think the first, you know, few months in a relationship is yeah. always like, are we are we not? What are we doing? Should I? Is it too much? Do I back off? Do and, I leave in? And, and, and it's, you know, you're kind of playing like hopscotch a little, a little bit. I'll tell you, and I remember telling you this just about a week ago. I'll go ahead and say it on here. And I know a lot of men probably are not going to want me to say this, but whatever. <laughs> A man knows probably within the first, let's say, 20 to 40 days of dealing with a woman, he already knows what role she's going to play in his life, mm. whether it's some serious, casual, anything in between. He already knows what role she's going to play in his life. How, what are, what, <laughs> by all means, enlighten us. <laughs> uh, okay. All right. Because for one, the man already has an idea in his mind of what he's looking for. He mm -hmm. may not be able to articulate it. He may, he may not be able to put it on paper, but he already has an idea of what he's looking for. And so he goes, he meets a female, he's around her. Let's say he wants somebody who's intellectual and he sees that she's not as intellectual as maybe he wants her to be. So he already knows, okay, probably not going to be able to, you know, uh, have anything serious because she's not exactly meeting whatever my standard may be. And so he already knows early on what role she's going to play just because of what he's looking for versus what she brings to the table. And she may be a type of woman that she brings a lot to the table and he just may be too stupid to see it because his mind is elsewhere or he just simply has different things that he's valuing at that point in his life. So that's why I say that. Okay. Okay. <laughs> um, I had, I had, I had a follow up question. I know I you do. I know you do JK. <laughs> um, okay. Do you, is there a situation in which, cause you were like, he already knows, which is yeah. really interesting. He, he knows, okay. The role that the woman's going to play in his life. Is that a product of what he is looking for in his life right now or who the woman is? Because let's say like you're both. just at both. both. It's both. both. So, you're, so you're saying that that can switch. I couldn't be looking at, for anything serious. And then all of a sudden I get upended and that can and what I'm looking for changes. Uh, yes, because I think that for me. Yes, that, that actually could happen. And matter of fact, that's happened to me before. 
And the thing is, is that for a man, he already knows what he's looking for. He already, he already knows that. And also where he's at in his life is also yeah. going to be a huge indicator of what he's looking for. And so once he's around the woman, they have conversations, they go out for drinks, they go out for coffee, go to dinner, things like that. That's when now he's able to get a, a little bit of a, a, a vibe with her. He's able to understand, okay, what's her mind like? What's her favorite color? How does she handle conflict? But what about her past? What about her upbringing? Things like that. And so it could be something is is remedial. It could be something as mundane or superficial as a job occupation, like where that's not what he's looking for. So he already knows it. I can't really, really go the distance with it because she doesn't have X, whatever X may be. And so for men, that's why I say between about 20 to 40 days, they usually already have a good idea of what role she's going to play just because of everything that he's computing, everything that he's taking in, he's registering it, he's going, he's stamping it and thinking, okay, now I got, I have all my information. I'm now going to submit it into the machine. And does the machine come back as green as in go? Does it come back in red as in, okay, you know what? It seems like there's a, a few red flags here. And so that right there will set the stage for, okay, long-term, casual, something in between a uh, maybe this could actually go somewhere maybe maybe not so i'm going to go ahead and still kind of see it through and so uh and so forth so that to me is something that i learned a long time ago one of my older homeboys told me that and i was like you know what i was like yeah i kind of know within the first 30 <laughs> days like <laughs> like what it's going to be so yeah that was something that he told me and so ever since that's something i've always been cognizant of and even just you know locker room, far talk, whatever. Uh, usually typically like uh, the men that I know, the men that I speak with, they pretty much say a version of the same thing. Okay. Interesting. Cool. <laughs> that's it. You can step off the witness stand. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. Now we're going to go ahead and move to the next topic. All right. This is something we were just talking about a couple hours ago. And Let's just say the the bottom the bottom line question is does everyone settle in some form or fashion? Oh gosh, we were just talking about this. Okay. <laughs> um, does everyone settle? Okay, so I think we're gonna disagree on this because oh, I know, I know we are. I know oh, okay. So I believe that it's settling when you decide when you make a decision about moving forward with someone like before you want to, I think we, I keep hearing this term like settling in context of, Oh yeah, well they, you know, so-and-so felt like they had to get married by 26. So they settled for who they were dating at 26. And, you know, because that's what society said, you live down South, you marry your college sweetheart, whatever, whatever. Yep. Um, because that's what you are supposed to do. Yeah. So I can't, and I think, you know, we all have this, like, I, I guess I ideal person uh, in our head that we think that we're going to settle down with. And I think that as we get older and we mature, that changes. Yes, it does. Um, Very good point. And the things that perhaps were important to us or necessary for us 10 years ago, 15 years ago, aren't the same things that are important now. So when it comes to settling, I mean, do I think that, you know, if I marry someone with blonde hair and my whole life I wanted to, you know, be, I saw myself with, you know, tall, dark, and handsome in my settling I wouldn't say that's settling, but did that fit like that ideal person that I had in my head my whole life? No, but that doesn't, you know, mean that I feel like I'm settling just because they're not exactly what I thought they always would be. Um, on the other side of that, though, oh, I feel so sorry for the people who and maybe they don't know. Maybe that's us. Maybe that's us, <laughs> you know, associating the settling title with them. Like, ooh, yeah, like they settled. Um, but when I, you know, pick my person, I'm going to feel like I got to 
freaking unicorn and they just like, you know, walked off of the cloud onto onto, onto earth and I'm going to feel the exact yeah, opposite, opposite of settling. So I don't know. I think settling is more so in conclusion. I think settling is more so um uh characteristic that we put on others based on our outward view of their relationship yeah. that we know not of. And I think that's especially really easy to do when, you know, the the looks category especially is a little uneven. But you know what? Even I have I have a girlfriend and her and her uh, boyfriend just just broke up and she is attractive and she is dynamic and she is smart and she's all the things. And he's not really attractive. He's not really charming. He's not really, I can find really kind of like no redeeming quality about him. Oh my goodness. Oh my so, God. Uh, that's okay. They're not dating anymore. Um, but I'm like, I felt like she was settling. Right. But again, that's an outward thing that I'm, I'm putting on them. Mm -hmm. So I don't think the people inside of the relationship, at least I, I hope they don't think that they're settling, but I think that's something that we um, associate and attribute to people relative to what we see from the outside. Yeah. I think that as you get older, settling takes on a completely different meaning. And I think that a lot of it just boils down to values and priorities. And I have had several conversations and I know certain men who, yeah, Stan, if she's not a bad B, you know, I can't date her. Well, there's a strong, strong chance that your wife's not going to be a bad B. There's a strong, strong chance. And that doesn't make her any less of a suitable, phenomenal wife that she can be. And I have certain homegirls who Stan, I, I want to date a guy who makes six figures. Okay, well, it's only like 10% of the damn population that makes six figures. So good luck with that because it is a big ass country. It is a lot of people. And guess what? That means you got to go pick them out of a crowd, find them, and oh, yeah, hope that they actually feel the same way about you as you do about them. So I think as you get older, I think your priorities shift. I think they evolve into now you just want somebody that you know is going to have your back somebody that's going to love you unconditionally, somebody that you can communicate with, somebody that you can build with, somebody that you can be a, a great dynamic duo with, somebody that's a great partner. And I feel that when you break it down to its simplest form, to the actual true definition, everybody's going to settle in one way or the other because you are not going to meet a man who is 6'3". He makes a lot of money. He can serenade you like Romeo. He also has that cool fun side and he owns two dogs and he rides a motorcycle. So you still feel a little, a little bit dangerous, but he also makes you feel safe as well. And et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. He's going to have a certain trait or quality about him where he probably falls short of what your ideal man is. Same thing in reverse for men. Men want the female who is going to, hey, like we were just talking about, have the perfect body count number. She's also going to be drop dead gorgeous. She's going to have a phenomenal job herself. Everybody in the world is going to want her, but she's going to only want us. And when you go all the way down that list, she is not going to excel in every damn category that you want her to. So in a nutshell, Everybody is going to have to settle in one way or the other, just in in one simple category as far as building or just imagining who their perfect mate is. Sure. And I, I think that just comes down to like no one single person is all of the things. Exactly. Like, like, that that doesn't exist. So exactly. Well, but, but you were going down that list and I was like, okay, check, 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 check. Yeah. <laughs> <I> think... <laughs> hey. Hey, that is, and listen, that is a I, I, true... I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, I know a guy like that, but all right, okay. But like, I wasn't, and I'm like, yes, yes, yes. But yes. like, oh, wait, did I hit the, is it me? Am I the lightning? <laughs> I caught, oh. I caught, I caught lightning in a bottle with this one. So, well, and, and to, you know, not to, cause I, I, I do agree with you, but I think also like if you, are self-aware of all of the things that you are and you are looking for 
those things in a mate, in a partner. If you exist, right, then all of those things have to exist in someone else too. So is it, do you trust that that is just making its way towards you as well? And mm -hmm. I think the people that settle are the people that don't think that that exists out there. So um, I think that that also, you know, you got to work on yourself too, yeah. because it's like, yeah, we can say, we can say we want all of these things in a person. And I want them to have the perfect body and to cook and to clean and to make all the money and to, you know, do it all in a mini skirt and six inch heels and, you know, all of, never have morning breath. And I, I don't know, like all of the things, right. But um, how do you show up? And so instead of being so concerned, yes, I think we need to be very specific about what we're looking for in a person, because I don't think you're going to attract someone with all of the things you're looking for if you don't even know what the hell you're looking for. But you also need to focus on being all of the things that you want to attract so that you guys are like energetically aligned and that you do find each other. And then guess what? That they are just as attracted to you as you are to them. So I think so many people focus so much on the other person and forget about being the right person to be found as well. Yeah, spot on. Can't even, uh, I don't even have a rebuttal for that. <laughs> so, <laughs> hey, we'll go ahead, put a bow on that one. Now <laughs> switch gears. Since we're already on the topic of settling. <laughs> Jamie. Stan. Would you date a man? That had seven kids, <laughs> seven baby mamas. Hmm. Let me think about it. No. <laughs> <laughs> so listen, one, sure. We're getting older, right? It is not <laughs> out of the realm of possibility. One hundred percent. Right. We're mm -hmm. mid thirties. Right. Yes. Yep. I totally get it. That's actually the first question my mom asks me. Like, <laughs> I'm like, yeah, <laughs> you've been engaged you've been married you have any kids like that's the first question like yeah what's his name where's he from what does he do how tall is he has he been married for jesus all right um but no i i i would not you want to talk about red flags that one <laughs> that one is on the verge of like purple it's so red i don't know and I'm asking this because as we were talking just a couple of days ago about the video that surfaced on Instagram with the man yeah, who has seven, about the video. Yeah, seven kids, seven baby mamas, basically saying that he doesn't feel that he needs to be held responsible because he impregnated these women and they did not do a good job of protecting themselves or, you know, choosing protection for themselves as to why they wind up having the kid, even though he's the one laying down with them as well. So you go ahead and give me your thoughts. And he also said, like, I told them like, they still want to have these babies, but I told them that I don't want the baby. Um, and that this is just not my responsibility whatsoever. And I shouldn't, I shouldn't have to pay money. I shouldn't have to be there to support, you know, financially, emotionally it, it, in any capacity, because I didn't want these babies to begin with. And my first question is for the women. All right. I don't even really care about him right now. My first question is for these women. Why in the first place did you want to have this man's baby? Now, this is a pattern. This has happened seven times and it probably going to happen more. Right. Yeah. I mean, but can we talk about this guy swimmers first? Holy hell. <laughs> it's just like a hole in one every single time. <laughs> <laughs> unbelievable yeah somebody like superman take, somebody take him to vegas i mean right now <laughs> oh my god seven babies take him to the freaking gas station to get him by seven lucky numbers all right yeah. well, enough with the jokes um why did they want to have his babies anyway he was sitting in some like beat up car and some raggedy ass t-shirt and he was <laughs> like i can't imagine so Right. We think about like Nick Cannon, right? He has all yeah. the babies, all the babies, moms. I get it. Nick Cannon's got a lot of money. He works a <laughs> hundred jobs. He's super famous. He's, you know, and, and you hear the stories all the time of women wanting to get pregnant to get cut that child support yep. check every month. And, you know, raising a child is a small price to pay. But 
for this guy. And maybe we don't know enough about him. But my <laughs> first question is, is what is the pull to continue to keep wanting to have this man's baby? Because it doesn't seem like he's rolling in the dough. All right. And it doesn't seem like he's a good guy. So why would you want to have a baby with a man who says he doesn't want to have a baby? Yeah. Like, okay, here's how the conversation goes. I am pregnant. Oh, well, that sucks. Uh, I don't want to have this baby. You should have an abortion. Doesn't matter. I want to have the baby. Why would you want to have a baby with a man who doesn't want to support you? So, yeah. and, 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 okay, I get it. If, if you are a hundred percent against, against abortion, I get it. But if that is your stance, then why would you not take there are like five steps that you could take before we've gotten here mm -hmm. in order to make sure that you don't like what is so special about this guy. We didn't really get that from the video, but I'm like, there has to be some sort of what. So I'm just confused all, <laughs> all, all the way around um, because you have to think that there's that there's a reason. Yeah. Uh, I don't know what the reason is. Um, like I said, I have no idea. I just I'm watching the video the same way you are. And my thoughts on it are, number one, you lay down with somebody, you make a baby with somebody, you need to handle your responsibilities. That's number one. So paying child support, that's the least you could mother freaking do just because whether you want the responsibility or not, you're a part of this. You lay down, you made your bed. Now you got to go ahead and you got to lie in it. And that's number one. Number two, and this is where I think that it gets very intricate and because it's men, we're reckless. Let's just go ahead and say that. Mm -hmm. And because we're reckless, that's where I firmly believe that there's got to be a higher thinker. There's got to be an adult in the room. And because he's reckless, don't let him now be reckless enough to put you in a very awkward position. I mean that literally. And so because of that, if it means that, okay, you know what, because he's reckless, because he doesn't like to go ahead and think things through and just act now and then worry about the consequences later. Now you have to be the more mature party. You have to be the one who's the more forward thinker and think two steps ahead and things like that. Just because I know a couple of guys who pretty much have a version of that same mentality. Maybe not exactly, but a version of that. And I think that much like if you're going into business with somebody and you're putting up the capital for the initial investment to go into business, well, you're the one who's putting up the most of the money. So you're the one that needs to be a little bit more careful. You need to be the one that's paying attention, paying much closer attention because see them, they don't really have nothing to lose. They're not putting up all their money. And I think for... Men and women in this regard, because the woman is the one who's carrying the child for nine months, you know, the man can go and do his part and then just leave, never come back. But the woman's the one who has to carry this child to term. So because of that, and because we all know a lot of times men are reckless, that's where I think for the female, um, she needs to make sure, first of all, know who she's laying down with but also think two steps ahead and don't just rely on him to be the responsible one. Because like I said, as men, uh, a lot of us are reckless and it's very shameful. I, I completely agree with you, Stan. And, you know, I'm a firm believer of control what you can control. And to your point of men are reckless. Okay. So if you're going to make the choice to be reckless then and you don't want a baby which it seems like these women did which i still i want answers <laughs> but, <laughs> but right control what you can control and if you don't want to have a baby then there there are things that you can do to not yes you can have, have that baby instead of saying like oh you got me pregnant come closer now it's your problem no it's not um and, and while yet yeah, is should there 100 percent be responsibility in a guy's part yeah but like you said, there doesn't have to be. And does that make it right? No. Does that make it fair? No, but that makes it how it is. And yeah. until men can start having babies, then that, right? It's, it's going to be that way. So, um, and he also said, now that I'm thinking about it in the video, he's like, and these women, he's like, I just met them 30 minutes yeah. before 
in the bar. It wasn't even like women that I had had relationships with. So, <laughs> so th these women have no self-respect and you know what? He's not wrong. He's not wrong. I, that, that makes him uh, no saint or so, you know, stand up citizen of humanity, but it's, it's just, it doesn't add up for me. Right. Yeah, it, it's like it's like they were trying to keep the baby in order to secure a relationship. Could and that was, and that was their only way to secure a relationship, which makes me really sad for them. Right. Because I get it. Like if you're trying to like secure the bag right, and se secure a check. But let's say that that wasn't a thing. Like, were they actually doing this to secure a relationship? And then that backfired big time with them. Is that the lesson that they're supposed to be learning from this? I don't know, but maybe that is the type of women that that he's attracting. These desperate women that are like, oh, he's like, I don't care about you, and they're like, oh, someone just care about me. I don't know. Um, me neither. Yeah, I think that uh, we both can agree. Obviously, it's an unfortunate situation, and uh, he definitely needs to grow up and step up to the plate and actually, you know, be responsible as a father seven times over. Right. Um, that's pretty much. All I can say on it is just, you know, I hope it all works out for the best. We wish them well. All right. JK. It's not working out for the best. Say that again. Speaking of things not working out for the best. Yes. <laughs> um, I want to pose a scenario to you. Mm -hmm. Let's say you're dating a guy, you know, let's, let's say he's like a very prominent figure in his respective sport that involves swinging a club to hit a very small white ball and mm -hmm. hopefully getting a hole in one. Mm -hmm. And you're dating the guy. Seems like everything's going good, you know? And then all of a sudden he calls you up one day and say, Hey babe, uh, you know, why don't you go ahead and, you know, take a trip, take a vacay somewhere. And then you just come to find out that by the time you get home, that your key's not working. You look up, you realize that he's changed the locks and he's basically giving you your walking papers that, uh, Hey, uh, you don't live here anymore. So I want you to tell me as a woman, what is your next move? Oh, whenever somebody looks off to the side, you already know they're about to say something off the wall. Well, again, I have questions. <laughs> what, what is my next move? Um, well, I, my first, my first question would be my next move would depend on the question that I have, which is, I don't think that a human being does that to another human being. I don't think that the public figure with which you are referring to Stan, um, would do that to someone just because he decides eh, I'm not just not that into you anymore. <laughs> I, yeah, I agree. <laughs> I like Susie Q better. Um, and, you know, it's, it hasn't been going great with us. That's not how a normal person dumps another normal person. And mm -hmm. so my first question is, and this would, you know, I guess help to advise to find my reaction is, what in the hell did she do? <laughs> A warrant that and not and not warrant because I think that that that's a very like low immature kind of kind of move kind of a reaction um and it's not that he didn't know that the world wasn't going to find out about it immediately Man. if not sooner so I'm again I'm confused um what in the heck did she do to get him to do that how what button did she press or not press that let can you imagine doing that to I mean, is this just a, a publicity stunt? What in what happened and why don't we know? <laughs> hey, I, I have no idea. Um, now that you describe it like that, yeah, maybe she did do something that was egregious enough what do you mean, to where maybe. Of course she did. I... <laughs> she had so, to have. So yeah, so she did something. We don't know what it is. Uh, but yeah, so obviously uh, everybody knows about the story now, but, you know, guy wants to break up with his significant other who lives at his house. He might or might not be a really, really famous golfer, maybe or maybe not. And instead of just simply 
breaking up like you just said, like how normal people do. You decide to go ahead and try to send her on a solo trip. And by the time she gets back, you change the locks and talk about gaslighting. And that's not even a word that I like to use because I think it's grossly overused. But that mm -hmm. has to really, really gaslight the you know what out of somebody when they come home. And instead of giving the hey, I don't really think this is going to work out. I've kind of had a change of heart and I would really like for us to go our separate ways. They come home to the, the key not working. So. I don't know what she did, but that definitely is funny. I, I, I got to say that. Or maybe or maybe he did try to uh, break up rationally with her and maybe we're giving him too much credit. Right. Because he's, you know, been in the public eye for years and years and years for having the cheating scandals, having this like there's kind of there's not been a tremendous amount of personal drama that's that's surrounded tiger but there's been you know uh, enough to make us go. oh it's been enough it's been enough to make us go okay okay um <laughs> but you have to think maybe that the perhaps the breakup was rejected at some point and he maybe felt like was. he didn't have another option he's like i gotta get this message across and i'm gonna you know it's it needs to involve hardware and that's not going to be on your left finger <laughs> and i don't know and add insult to injury like maybe that's exactly how it went down like who knows you might be very well be right on that and now she's suing him for what is it like 30 million yeah. 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 <laughs> there, this this was a last ditch effort. There was a lot more build up to this. There was a lot of consternation, a lot of whatever. She probably threatened this, that, and the next thing. Yeah. Um, and this was, but yeah, I would, I would love to see the Netflix special on, on the lead up to this. No one. doubt. No doubt. I cannot that's, wait till that, more. that's gotta be good. <laughs> I can't wait till more and more details come out about this because you know this story is not going to go away. Like this I story hope, is going to doesn't. We need it, to know. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like it's going to gain wheels and like, hey, dog. Like I got to know what the hell happened, bro. Like I don't mean to be all in your business, but since now it's already out there, hey, bro. Like I need to know what the hell happened because that just sounds like something out of a lifetime uh, Saturday afternoon movie where. Change the locks. Then she sues the guy. And then you hear you hear about how she was, what was it? She was making valuable contributions to the household. I remember reading something like that. Uh probably I'm probably misquoting yeah, a little she bit. She refilled the Brita every day. Okay. She she took the trash out. All Man, right. I'm kidding. Well. I'm, I'm kidding. But to bring this full circle, this is why you pause before you go public with somebody on Instagram because the second you delete it, everybody wants to know what happened. And here we are wanting to know, we have to know what happened because, it's public, it. because it's public. You know what, JK? I love how you bought that full circle. We're going to end on that. Okay. <laughs> I can't even say nothing else. Hey, we're going to end on that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'll, see, I'll see you next week same time same place um and we will of see if, if bama makes it through you know that oh. powerhouse 16 seed round one game of the ncaa yeah and then they'll on probably Saturday. go ahead then they'll probably go ahead and lose and you know uh the round of 32 because they're not really a basketball school and they got lucky to have the top overall seed yeah and even though they have the top overall seed caesar sportsbook still has those cougs as the favorite Hey.